They're, they're, they're one in the same. One in the same. Some people think they're not, but they are one in the same. You haven't even got Jehovah's Witness away, that's why they're telling us. Je telling me not, you're doing it wrong. They don't know the faith, my friend. They don't believe in the beginning. The no. Spirit, the Holy, the Father, the Son, they don't believe Yeah, in exactly. That. The Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians. Fucking making their own shit up. You know? But, but we've got a, we've, we've got a, I mean, have you been an active Christian for most of your life? I've just been brought up with a Christian family, so I'm not sure about it, but I'm here for the number. Right, okay, fine. So let, let me just, let me just give you like a, a quick one too about a way to structure your life as a Christian. Yeah, that's what I need. Yeah, so a, a, a quick, a quick bit of discipleship. Just for you, just for my brother who's come down. You're, you're recording this, aren't you? Yeah, but it depends how we go, so I might not put it up. Right, cool. if, do you not want us to record? I don't or do you care. want us to blow I'll your face? Stop, um, yeah, blow my face. Yeah? Okay, you have to blow your face. I'm going to do something. Don't, don't do anything that's going to get you in trouble. No, it's not yeah, don't just you look after yourself personally. Yeah, amen. Thanks be to God. But let, let's just talk about I, I just want to talk about a way that you can structure your daily life as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your daily, your weekly, your monthly life as a Christian, right? And I'm going to give you seven disciplines. Yeah, that, that will help you to structure your life and help you to orientate your life towards towards God yeah. as opposed to towards yourself. Yeah. Alright? Yeah, now I'm going to give you suggestions about how you can do this. But the, the biblical instruction is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means that the apostles are calling us to think about how we live as Christians. Okay? And right now we're in Lent. You know what Lent is? Lent is a, a, a 40 day spiritual campaign where the Christian um, just like an MOT on their soul, just to see where on their are. heart, just to see where they are. It's a it's a campaign by which you tackle your bad habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, swearing or like being angry, fighting, and it's where you cultivate good habits. Good habits like prayer and fasting and yeah, you know, I don't and, do no prayer or fasting. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah. So in in terms of the the, the, the Christian faith. There are seven disciplines, and the first one is prayer. Okay. Now, if you're stuck on how to pray, perhaps you don't. You're not particular articulate. I don't know. Like, do you do you feel that you're good at praying? Or? No, I don't pray. Okay. Well, what I would encourage you to do is to learn the Our Father. You know, the Lord's Our Prayer. Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses. As we forgive those who are trespassed against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, so that yeah, that is that. yeah. I right. went to the Christian school at Catholic school, so really? I know the debate about the uh, more, more prayer thing, but not really deep into it. Yeah, if you're ever stuck for prayers, right, just get out your Bible. What, what would you do? I, 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 I'm using the NASB. The NASB. What, what would you tell me to read? I, I would ask you. I'd encourage you to read something like the NASB or the ESV or something like that. And the reason why I would encourage you to read those ones is because they're... they're said, well, I'm not yeah. I want to write that down quick. Okay, fair enough. So, N-A-S-B. Say that again? N-A-S-B or E-S-V. And the reason why I say those two is because they are literal word-for-word -word translations from English to, sorry, from the original Greek into English. Mm -hmm. So it's literally marrying the, the, the word word words literally like 12, into 12. English. Because there are different ways you can translate. Yeah, yeah, well, let's yeah. not get bogged down in that. Now, if you're ever stuck for prayers, you have the Book of Psalms. The Book of Psalms is an entire book full of prayers. Just open it up and read one. Anyone, just read them. And that's what it is. That's that's what, yeah. The Bible equips you with what you need, so just use it. Yeah, no, so, but I want to go from start to finish. I want to go yeah? to the start and I'm going, I want to go through it again, but I don't want to read the wrong book. That's fine. There's no wrong books in the Bible. No. Nah. So you can read any of them. The main one. But I would encourage you to start in the New Testament, not the Old Testament. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Start in the New Testament, and then when you've got a grip of the New Testament, then move into the Old Testament. Yeah? So the first, the first discipline I encourage you to keep is prayer. And the central 
teacher of prayer is our Lord and his prayer which is the Lord's prayer the Our Father okay base all your prayers around this when you're stuck use the Psalms and I'd encourage you to try and structure your day with prayer so pray in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the evening yeah like put it into your day so it's something you're doing every day. Have a fire out of time with my life just go pray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Take take some time exactly, take some time out of your life just to pray. Okay? The second discipline, yeah, so this is not gonna take long, we're already on number two, is fasting. Right? A Christian needs to fast. And the reason why you should fast is because well there's multiple reasons in scripture, but I'm just gonna give you the first one. There are other reasons, but this is the first one. It's because it helps you to discipline your passions. If you can discipline your stomach, yeah? If you can take control of your passions, then you can begin to start disciplining other passions. If you can discipline your desire for food, then you can discipline your lust, then you can discipline your wrath, then you can discipline your greed. Because the idea of the Christian life is we suppress the passions that cling to the world, that are of this world, and we cultivate the virtues. I'm going to be speaking on that after I've done with you. Yeah? So fast. Now, there's times of fasting that the church collectively uses, like Lent and Advent. Those are two big times of fasting. Yeah? It gives you space to think, to restructure your life. Yeah? But you can also choose to fast. Some Christians fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. I would suggest to you that you fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. Every week. It's good for the body. Yeah, especially in our day of, of plenty. Then the third thing to do is to give alms. To give alms to the poor. Because giving alms to the poor reminds us always that the, the possessions that we have, the riches that we have, they're not ours, they belong to God. Yeah, what, 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 what poor are you talking about? Someone outside a shop, front, smoking drugs? No, I, I'm talking about the, the, the poor within the church, within the fellowships. Yeah? Now, don't get me wrong, there are, there are drug addicts in the church. Yeah? They still need help. Yeah, but, but there are plenty of Christian charities you can support, like the Barnabas Fund, Open Doors, uh, Christian Concern for Our Nation, uh, Christian Solidarity Worldwide, the Leprosy Fund. You know, these are great Christian institutions that are doing wonderful work in the world, doing kingdom work or church work, and they need money. So you can give. And, and as, a, as an approximation, as a, ten, as a custom, as a culture, we tend to try and give 10%. Yeah, but don't worry if you can't, because God loves it. 10% of your earnings. 10% of your earnings, yeah. But that, that is, or you could give it to your fellowship, you could give it to a Christian charity, you could give it to a, your, the congregation of the faith, that group of Christians that you meet with. Yeah? In the collection box, yeah. it's probably what you, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the church. Okay, so so give alms because it reminds you that money is not your own, and God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah, yeah. yeah? and if you give one penny out of your poverty, that is greater than giving a thousand pounds out of your wealth. You know. Now, also study the faith. Become a student of the truth. That's what I'm trying to do now. Amen. Thanks be to God, and and, and may uh, may God increase that edification and that discipleship I'm in yourself. There. Yeah? There. That's, that's, that's yeah. every step, mate, every step. Yeah. You know, the Christian faith is like, a, the truth of the Christian faith is like a fire in the middle of the field. The closer you are to the fire, the more illuminated your face becomes, the, the warmer your heart is, yeah? You might be in the field, like you've just come onto the field, you've just become an active Christian. So you might be at the back of the field, you might only get a little bit of the light and a little bit of the warmth. But by studying the faith, you can move closer. Yeah, and our, our idea is to become like the image of Christ. So that when someone looks at us, they see the image of God within us. Yeah, so study the faith. Take time every week to study the faith. Study the Bible. Read commentaries about the Bible. Yeah, no, I, am. Yeah. I do do a little bit of studying every night. I've been doing that for the last about a year now. That's fantastic, bro. I've come here for a couple of years. Yeah. And, and they see that Raul guy. Fantastic. So protein, man. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, bro, we need men like you in the church. The church needs men like you because you know you know those kind of middle class Christians that me and you encounter in the church. Yeah. They ain't gonna work, reach working class lads like us. Like the, it's working class Christians like us who speak the language of the white working class that will reach the white working class. Yeah. So we gotta speak to our own communities. Yeah. 
speaking the truth of our faith, masculine, not not not, not this wimpy doormat no, Christianity do, that the bishops do, teach. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was about to say. They do get bored in the church. Yeah. They don't think people. It looks like people are just there to do the hour and go in for it. Yeah, that's it. It's pretty good now. I've done my exactly. Hour. So we're going to be going to be talking about that. So one of the one of the next one of the next disciplines that you should practice is the practice of evangelism. That means sharing your faith with other people. Trying to do that more power from my area. Amen. Yeah, so share your testimony. Share how Christ is changing you. And it is a process, because you're going to have good habits and bad habits. But talk about how Christ is making you a better man. Better to your family. Better to your community. A more loyal friend. Well, funny enough, my friend I've been talking to. Yeah. You're mad, you're brainwashed, you're brainwashed. Tell him good. And then he um, kind of invited the dog Rose me being changed. What's he doing? I said, come on, bro. Yeah. He's like, oh, I do believe in science. Right, well, work on that belief. Work on that belief. Encourage him to take a step forward. You know, so many people. People, the thing that holds them back, people from our community, the thing that holds them back is that sense of shame. They're embarrassed because they go to a church, they see a bunch of wimpy Christians, yeah, and they have all this prejudice around them about Christians being dormants. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so encourage him to, to throw off shame and to embrace his heritage because you know us, right? Our people were Christians. Your great great grandfathers were Christians. Their grandfathers were Christians. Their grandfathers were Christians. All right. But that inheritance we're squandering. Fast. Yeah, fast. And look at the mess that's developing. Our families are broken. Our communities are poor. Our children are uneducated, underachieving. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And and what's going to recover that? Do you think it's that kind of wimpy Christianity we see on TV? No. It's got to be a Christianity that that stands up, that rises up in its own identity and says, I'm a Christian, I've got a history which is the history of the church, I've got a value system which is a Christian value system, I've got Christian beliefs, and I don't care if it upsets you. Yeah, I'm not surrendering my faith to you. So evangelism. Now the way that I would encourage you to do evangelism is firstly, just talk about what God has done in your life. Then as you've learned the faith more, yeah, because it depends upon study, then maybe get a couple of Christians together, buy some Christian literature, set up a stall, you know, like you see the Muslims do in the, in the city center, right? With a banner at the front, talk to people. Don't preach at people like you see happening here. Yeah, I know, but I need to, I need to, know what I'm, I need to Exactly. Learn a bit more so you need to study right? first. You need to study first. For the moment, at your level, just talking about what God has done in your life is evangelism enough. But when you've learned the faith more, then you're in a position to start doing more evangelism. The sixth, the sixth discipline is to practice solitude, which means to take time alone with yourself to reflect on yourself. The apostles instruct us, yeah? They instruct us to examine yourself to see if you remain in the faith. That is what the apostles say. So you need... Who scores you on the faith? Right. It's a collective experience. So right now, this is, this is discipleship. What's happening right now? And then if your pal, your friend becomes a Christian and you share with him the things that you have learned, that's discipleship. Yeah, yes, I agree. Yeah. What I would suggest that you do that, that because the church is in a bad state at the moment, yeah. What I would suggest that you do is, is you watch things like Soko films. Yeah. You you dig into the commentaries. There's loads of commentaries you can find on the internet written by scholars, and it's like having the scholar with you next to you. Yeah. But you you can access really genius people. Yeah. Who who will will talk about the faith with you as if they're there. You just read what they're saying about the scripture. Yeah. That's what I take from you. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's that's part of it. And what you do is you, you weigh up the opinions, because I might be wrong on something. Yeah, of course, I'd ask, I'd ask about, yeah, I know what yeah. you You weigh up the opinions, and the one, the opinion that it seems strongest to you is the one that you adopt until you find a stronger opinion. Yeah? So practice of solitude and reflection means that you look at yourself. You examine yourself. Okay, why did I do that? Did I do that because I was acting from anger? Did I do that because I was acting from hope? Did I do that because I was pursuing justice or because I was pursuing self-interest? 
what you know you examine yourself you see what your motivations are and where you need to repent you repent in the full knowledge that God is lavish in his forgiveness right bro it doesn't matter if you've done drugs it doesn't matter if you've been to prison it doesn't matter if you've got kids outside of wedlock God can and will forgive you all you need to do is cry out to his mercy and his mercy will be given lavishly yeah his promises are new every day which means that if you screw up today you can start on a clean plate tomorrow yeah and each time you fall down you just get back up and you start walking in the right direction and if you have to do that 10 times in a day then that's what you do yeah exactly okay don't give up the seventh discipline is living in community now what I mean by living in community means that you have a shared life with other Christians it doesn't mean necessarily that you live in the same house though that might help yeah but you share your life with other Christians so that you can go to your brother when you're struggling or when you don't know something you can work together for the, the church and the kingdom of God it means that you organize yourself in a way that the rhythm of your life is connected to your brothers and sisters because I tell you bro the church needs strong men like you because right now the church in the West is full of wimps you have something to offer the church I'll tell you what you can offer them strength because the church has forgotten how to be strong and I can see already in your heart you got the heart of a lion you got the heart of someone who's a fighter yeah right but bro but bro the heart of a fighter also needs discipline because Christians are not meant to be brutes, you know? C.S. Lewis wrote a book. You, you can look it up on YouTube, yeah? And you can just yeah, listen. I, go, I just want to focus on one thing first, then it okay. can go out All right, so li living community. Living community. If you practice these disciplines, mm -hmm. prayer, fasting, almsgiving, study, evangelism, the practice of solitude and reflection and living in community, you will begin to orientate your life well, in a different way. Again, just case I forget. These are the seven, seven disciplines. Seven disciplines, right? Now, when I just want to tell you what the, the, the biblical basis is of all of these things. Jesus said, when you pray. He didn't say, if you pray. Jesus said, when you fast. He didn't say, if you fast. Jesus said, when you give alms. He didn't say, if you give alms. Yeah? Jesus himself went to the temple and he studied with the priests and they were amazed at his knowledge. So Jesus himself practiced study. Christ himself commands the apostles to go out to teach and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there's an instruction to evangelize. Christ himself would regularly retreat from the crowds, go to the hills and the mountains and pray in silence. So he practiced this kind of solitude. And Christ himself gathered a community of people around him, 12 apostles and disciples around those. So they were circles of, of closeness. And he lived with them for three years. So all of these disciplines that I'm giving you are fundamentally biblical. Yeah. So that's the basis of a, a discipleship. If you forget anything, just look on Soko Films and you'll see this conversation. Yeah. And you're, and you're, yeah. Peace be with you, bro. Can I just encourage you while you're here today? Yeah. While you're here today, don't get involved in debates. No, I'm not. If someone asks you a question, just say, I'm a new Christian, I'm learning. Practice humility. Yeah. Because people here, they'll try to trap you on silly questions. They try to trap you on silly questions. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Anyway, peace to you, bro.